Myasthenia gravis is a Latin expression that literally means grave muscle weakness, which perfectly describes the weakness that happens when this autoimmune disease affects the skeletal muscles. People with myasthenia gravis might wake up feeling fine, but get progressively weaker as the day goes on, and by the end of the day they might feel very weak, sometimes even getting weaker with repetitive movements, like chopping vegetables. Myasthenia gravis can affect the extraocular muscles, which control movement of the eye as well as the eyelids. So individuals might have diplopia, or double vision, as well as ptosis, or drooping eyelids. Myasthenia gravis preferentially affects young women in their 20s and 30s, and older men in their 60s and 70s. But the cause of this odd, bimodal distribution of age of onset isn't quite clear. To better understand myasthenia gravis though, let's review normal muscle contraction, but at the cellular level. First you've got your motor neurons that release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction, which then binds to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on the muscle cell membranes. Binding of acetylcholine to its receptor activates a chain reaction in the muscle cell that ultimately results in muscle contraction. But what happens in myasthenia gravis though? Well, remember that it's an autoimmune disease, and specifically one that's categorized as a type 2 hypersensitivity, which causes cytotoxic injury, meaning that it results in the lysis or death of host cells, which is mediated by autoantibodies, which are antibodies that are specific for our own cells or proteins. Alright, so in this case, the patient's B cells inappropriately make antibodies that bind to nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on the muscle cells. Once acetylcholine receptors are bound by the antibody, they're unable to bind the acetylcholine, and therefore they don't respond to the contract signal from the central nervous system. Anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies can also activate the classical complement pathway. Now the complement system is a family of small proteins that work in an enzymatic cascade to fight off bacterial infections. The activation of complement causes inflammation and destruction of the muscle cells, and reduces the amount of acetylcholine receptors on the surface. Now, a minority of people with myasthenia gravis produce another type of harmful antibody called muscle-specific receptor tyrosine kinase antibodies, which attack proteins inside the muscle cells instead of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on the muscle cell surface, but they similarly lead to destruction of healthy cells. In very rare cases, myasthenia gravis can present as a perineoplastic syndrome, which means that an underlying cancer like bronchogenic carcinoma or thymic neoplasm, also known as thymoma, generates an immune response which results in the generation of autoantibodies. In some cases, if certain muscles are affected, myasthenic patients can experience a myasthenic crisis, which is a life-threatening manifestation of the disease. An example of this might be a decreased function of the muscles that control breathing. The good news though is that treatment has been able to reduce mortality from myasthenia gravis. One type of medication is an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor, like neostigmine or pyridostigmine. Acetylcholine esterase is an enzyme that degrades acetylcholine. So acetylcholine esterase inhibitors stop acetylcholine esterase from breaking down acetylcholine, which ends up increasing the concentration of acetylcholine around the muscle cells and helps counteract the effects of acetylcholine receptor antibodies. Myasthenia gravis is also treated with immunosuppressive drugs, like prednisone, which reduce the production of harmful antibodies. Finally, a lot of people with myasthenia gravis undergo surgical removal of the thymus. This seems to reduce the muscle weakness symptoms even in people that don't appear to have any identifiable problems with the thymus gland itself. It's possible that this is because helper T cells, which originate in the thymus, help B cells to make antibodies to the acetylcholine receptor. Alright, as a quick review, myasthenia gravis is a type 2 hypersensitivity disorder where the body produces antibodies that most commonly target nicotinic acetylcholine receptors on the surface of muscle cells. The antibodies block the receptors, which means the signal to contract isn't received. Those antibodies also activate the complement pathway, which leads to muscle cell destruction. Myasthenia gravis preferentially affects young women or older men, and commonly affects the extraocular muscles, which leads to eyelid drooping or double vision, but it might affect any skeletal muscle.
Thanks for watching. You can help support us by donating on Patreon or subscribing to our channel or telling your friends about us on social media.